It is a dreary Texas morning here. I have been awake for quite some time. It started raining and thundering around 2.30 in the morning and it woke me up and I thought, uh, I'm awake. I better go check on Crispin since he probably needs some help. So I got up and opened our bedroom door and Nahan was right outside the door and was like trying to get inside. So I helped Crispin and then he was, Nahan was obviously like, you know, a little nervous with the thunderstorm going on. So he got in our bed, which was fine, but he was very restless. It kept me awake for a while and then I was just sort of dozing and tossing and turning. So anyway, I'm a little sleepy, but it's cool. We're good. Today is Sunday the 22nd. Wait, what is today? Yeah, it's the 22nd. Uh, it is my day two of my DIY writing retreat slash writing conference. If you missed part one, I posted that on Tuesday. I'll link that below. I also had a video from a few weeks back just sort of describing like what my idea for this weekend was and my plan and my schedule and all that kind of stuff. So I'll put that video below too if you missed it. It's a little later than I was anticipating. It's just about nine o'clock at the moment. What I think I'm gonna do is instead of writing from 8.30 to 10.30 and then having that 30 minute reading break, I'm just gonna skip the reading and do writing from nine to 11. So that'll be fine. If you missed the last vlog, I was able to get a good amount of work done. I got through chapter three with revisions and then I also worked quite extensively on a timeline and making sure it, the story events made sense within like an actual calendar. <laughs> um, so people aren't going to work at like Sunday at 3 a.m. or something like that. So I've got all that ready. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just dive into the next section of my book and try to revise it as best I can. So let's go. Okay, I've been working for a little while. I still have about an hour left to go here, but I've I've been doing kind of a lot of jumping around between like chapter two and chapter four and chapter three and chapter four and chapter two, <laughs> trying to like mesh everything so that everything flows and makes sense together. So I'm not sticking with just like one chapter. I'm, I'm bouncing all over the place. There's a couple chapters now, four, five, and six that take place over the same, it's like one period of time and they like one afternoon basically. Um, but it's three chapters worth of material. Uh, those chapters I think are pretty solid. I'm sure there are things that need to be revised in them, but in terms of like overall plot and making sure the story is correct, they're I think pretty okay. So I, I'm not even gonna look at them at the moment. I'm just gonna skip over them and head on to chapter seven. In this chapter, there's a conversation that needs to happen between the main character and a very minor character. The conversation will be tricky, I think, to get right because the main character is going to have to reveal information in a very nonchalant way that's later gonna come and bite her in the butt. But I don't want it to be obvious that this is information she shouldn't be talking about. When it becomes a problem, I want it to be like a surprise for the readers, I guess. I don't know. Tricky balance with the conversation, but that's what I'm going to work on next. Relative success. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, I finished the chapter. I fiddled with the dialogue a little bit for this conversation. Conversation. I think it turned out okay. Future Meredith is gonna reread this entire thing and be like, this is terrible, but it's fine. It's fine, it's fine for now, we're good. At the moment, it is almost 11 o'clock. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of get myself situated out in the living room and I'm gonna find a video to watch to hopefully be inspired. I'm gonna try to find, um, I'm gonna try to pick videos today that are a little more like educational. The ones I watched yesterday were like author interviews, which were good, but they weren't aimed to like specifically teach you something, you know what I mean? So there are some other videos I have saved that are specifically like a presentation, more of a presentation type video. So I'm gonna try to pick one of those and watch that and then it'll be lunchtime. So I'm gonna save all this and get myself ready in the living room.
Okay, I think I'm gonna go with this one. It is from the channel Film Courage. If you haven't checked out this channel, I would highly recommend it. It is, of course, aimed at filmmakers, but they oftentimes have interviews with screenwriters or other people who are part of the writing process or putting together the story of a film. And of course, there's a ton of tips and tricks that work just as well on screen as it does on page when it comes to telling a story. And they have a ton of great videos aimed at how to tell the best kind of story or how to make your characters believable and a slew of different things. Uh, they have really long videos like this one. This one's over an hour long, uh, but they also have really short ones that are like two or three minutes or maybe like five or 10 minutes. And they're just sort of little snippets of conversation with different people who are giving a tip or a um, piece of advice or suggestion or thing to try or exercises and all kinds of different stuff. So I'll link this channel below if you've never looked through their stuff. Um, I've found a lot of really interesting and helpful things on this channel. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab my notebook and start watching. I don't know who this lady is, Pamela J. Smith, but I guess I'll know who she is after I finish watching this video. <laughs> so let's go. The stories had to embody and promote at least one, hopefully more, of these four qualities, joy, dignity, passion, and integrity. A lot of romantic comedies do not. Therefore, they are maybe entertaining, but they're shallow. And there's nothing wrong with fluff entertainment. That's perfectly fine. But the romantic comedies that move us, that raise our spirits, that, that thrill our hearts, are the ones that embody in some fashion, in some of the characters, joy, dignity, passion, or integrity. All right, it's almost noon. I still have a bit of this video left to go, but I'm gonna take it in the kitchen and finish it in there while I'm eating my lunch because I do have my live stream at one and I need to be, I have a little bit of time to set up everything for that. This is very good so far. Unfortunately, she has sparked a new story idea. So I was writing, I was writing notes for that. It can go to the back of the line though because I got a lot of story ideas. Okay, so yeah, let me, move myself and get my lunch ready and then I'll finish this up while I'm eating. Okay, so there's a really interesting discussion toward the end of this interview. This is a little more based in film, but I thought it was interesting anyway. The interviewer asked, how do you think romantic comedies have changed throughout, you know, previous decades up until present? And she said that rom-coms that were created back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, while the Hayes Code was still in effect, the Hayes Code um, was a very strict set of rules that filmmakers had to follow. They couldn't discuss certain topics. Um, you couldn't show certain things on screen. It had to be very discreet. And she said because of this strict rules that people had to follow. They had to be very clever with the way they wrote the films. They had to have witty dialogue. They had to have double entendres that weren't super obvious or they would get censored. And she said, nowadays, of course, you know, you can do pretty much anything you want in a movie. You can show anything you want. You can say anything you want. You can discuss any kind of topic under the sun. And because it is so open, writers don't have any constraints, which can be a good thing. Obviously we don't want people to be censored, but because there is no uh, thing you have to work around, people are less creative. There isn't as much witty banter in movies. There isn't as much carefully crafted scenarios to get around certain things. And so, she said, you know, if you're looking for inspiration or if you want an example of a well-written, well-constructed film, a lot of movies from those earlier decades are great to watch because they have all of that really great dialogue and all of that kind of stuff in them. If you're looking for one, by the by, uh, It Happened One Night is probably the best of the bunch. Um, it's from the 30s. It's fantastic. The entire movie is so entertaining. Even now, I don't think there's anything in it that is dated necessarily. It's just a good movie and it's funny and it's well written. So I have a few more minutes of this left. Let me finish this up and then we'll be on to the live stream. We're back to wrap things up. So let me know how you did on this final little 
um, writing session here. I got through chapter nine. I don't know if I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> hmm. I am really tired. I am really tired. It is almost three o'clock, so I have the last two hours of the day are supposed to be more um, conferency type activities. So I'm gonna find another video or two to watch. There's one, I do wanna watch the one with um, Lisa Kleypas and Eloisa James, because I do love Lisa Kleypas. I think that one's a little more like author interview style, not super intense. And then there's another one I would like to watch that is more like a teaching kind of thing. So I'll try to see, I'll see if I can get both of those in. So let me clean up my space in here a little bit and get situated out on that, those super comfy sofas that are in my living room now my newly created living room. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna uh, give me a few minutes to set all that up and head out there and it'll be video watching time and then the weekend will be over, which is a little crazy, but yeah, okay, let me go. <laughs> all right, I've got my laptop, iPad, it's an iPad. I have that ready on my lap as though it were a laptop. Okay, I'm getting, I'm getting tired, we better watch these quick. <laughs> but the interview with Lisa Kleypas is a little less than an hour. So I'm going to start with that one. And I don't think I've, I'm, as I'm pulling this video up, it kind of looks familiar. <laughs> I wonder if I've already watched it like, you know, two years ago or something. But we'll see. I'll start it. And if I've already watched it, and I'm like, Oh, yeah, I remember this. Um, I might switch to something else, but we'll at least start with this and see what Lisa has to say, because I do love, I do love a Lisa Kleypas book. So let's get to watching. Okay, finished with that interview. It was really fun because um, Lisa Kleypas and uh, Eloisa James are actually like good friends in real life. So it was a lot, it was just fun to watch their interaction more than anything else. Uh, there was one thing that Lisa shared that I liked. I think it's a nice piece of general writing advice that would work for anyone writing in any genre. She said that she had an editor tell her one time that whatever your book is, you should make it very. So very funny, very passionate, very dark, very scary, whatever, whatever it is supposed to be, really push it to the extreme. Because if it's just in the middle and kind of mamby pamby, that's not as interesting as it. So um, I thought that was, that was a nice little tidbit. So next I have a little less than an hour until the end of the day. I can't decide which of these I want to watch. I have a couple more. I think I'm going to try this rom-com recipe, what you need to know, and see if it's anything I don't already know yet. It's a little over an hour, so we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> but let's go start that one. Hmm, okay, so that was a little bit of a bust. <laughs> um, it was more of a panel of people who are more like aspiring authors like me. And which is fine, but I didn't I didn't find it to be particularly helpful. So that's okay. I still had fun this weekend. This was this was nice, just being able to sit around and write and watch some inspiring videos. I have a new story idea now. Thank you so much. But it's a good idea, so you know what? There it is. <laughs> Thank you again to everyone who came out to the different live streams. I really appreciate all of you who came out and just hung out, even if you didn't say anything. It's always nice to not be talking to yourself when you live stream. I am gonna go ahead and end this one for today. Um, it's been a fun weekend. I do hope I can do this again sometime soon, maybe like in the summer. Some a weekend in the summer I can find to do this. Maybe like I'm once a quarter would be fun for this kind of thing. I can't do this every weekend. I don't think I would want to do this every weekend, but once a quarter I think sounds like a fun idea. If you've ever done something like this, again, like let me know or if there's other types of activities that you would want me to do or 
just different ideas for me to try out, let me know. I would be happy to work in some different kinds of things to the schedule. If you liked this video though, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button. I post videos on Tuesdays and Fridays. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you next time. Bye.